What's up guys? You're probably noticing this is kind of a short review for uh, Anime Milwaukee this year and there's two reasons for that. Partly, um, a lot of the review is actually going to go up on my website, which is right here. You can click on the card up there. Um, that You can see a fuller and more extensively written review there. Um, for now, with this one, I'm really just going to cover the main things that I really feel like this convention succeeded and failed on, um, which I kind of think aren't a whole lot that I need to talk about. So when it comes to my reviews, you know that I talk about a lot of things in different categories. This one won't be different. We'll start with the panels. Um, the panels in general, um, like there was a good offering, but this is going to kind of be a commonality in terms of my problems, so it's why I'm not going to talk about it a lot in each section, which is just um, staffing issues created time problems, which, you know, led to a whole slew of issues that were going on throughout the convention in general um and it just kind of seemed like in some ways maybe that like things just weren't going anime milwaukee's way this year um which in a way it's unfortunate but at the same time it's something that i feel like the con should have had like essentially a a, a an emergency plan for and in some ways I, I feel they may not have so well compared to last year the schedule was i think better in a way because like you could find the schedule a little easier and the schedule wasn't draining people's batteries because you could just go to their website and they had QR codes everywhere. Um, the problem was is that it was still hard to f absolutely figure out where like panels were because of the way that they were written in the panel listings. I kind of made the mistake and I didn't actually grab a panel book this time. Um, but like you can check their website. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to see it. Um, if you're curious, uh, if it's still up, that is too. Um, it, it really kind of was, I, I heard it was confusing. I didn't really look at the panelists too much. That's why I'm not gonna spend too much more time on it. But I did hear there was a bit of a problem. I did try to go to a panel that was scheduled at 11 and then got then we were told was actually getting pushed back to 11.30, but then didn't even actually get to start until like 11.45 because they were having trouble setting things up and there wasn't enough staff available. So, um, I knew I ran it. So that was something that I saw. Um, there really wasn't anybody to help set up my friend's panel. I did all of the setup. Like I helped with all the setup for her and that isn't my job. Like, I don't know why this is the second panel I've, or second con I've been to Well, I've had to do a, a con like volunteers job. Like I have had, I had to do bad checking at Yumicon and out in Milwaukee, I had to be the tech person. So it's crazy. And there wasn't even a badge person like at, at the, the door. So it's just, I felt like there were staffing holes in a lot of places. So I've increasingly um, felt it less important to talk about cosplay integration in my in my reviews, mostly because um, I don't find it as important to a con. I feel like every con lets you cosplay about the way you want. I and to be honest, while I feel like it's okay to, you know, for guys to be shirtless or whatever, I'm not going to make a commentary on whether or not a con should or should not because I don't feel like A, that's my decision, and B, I don't feel like that's an objective part for a review. The game room I'm gonna talk about very quickly. Um, it's not that different from last year, honestly. Um, they did move because actually this year in the in Anime Milwaukee, um, they got more of the Wisconsin Center. The Wisconsin Center, if you don't know, is a convention center that has three floors. Um, in the past, like almost decade, it feels like. the every other time there has been another convention or just another event going up on the top floor of the, the convention center on that third floor um this year they actually it was all anime milwaukee in the in the wisconsin center um which is really cool um i think i like that a lot um and as a result um they had actually moved a number of the rooms so the merch room was actually up on the top floor i'll talk about that later um but then the game room was actually in, not in the Hyatt like it used to be. That's where Tabletop moved to. So it actually got put into the old room where the merch was. Um, so the game room got it at a bigger location, um, which was really nice. Um, I don't think it really affected a lot though. Um, I never heard anything about games going missing, them being really stingy about them. Um, they weren't stingy about a lot of things that they maybe should have. And then they were stingy about things that they shouldn't have at this con actually 
Um, that'll be part of my closing notes. Guess I think had a huge improvement this year. I felt like there was significantly more interesting guests. Um, the sad part though is I, this really isn't the fault of the con, where a lot of and a lot of people are upset about it that like Matthew Mercer and Laura Bailey, yeah, Laura Bailey, um, I think it was Travis Cunningham, I think, um, they couldn't make it because the plane that they were supposed to be on to get to Milwaukee. Um, was canceled and therefore they had to cancel for the weekend um, due to weather so it's not really anime milwaukee's fault um i won't blame them too hard for that the thing i will blame them for and that my and my good friend nick from confident video brought up which is that they should have been there earlier i can't give them too much crap for that though because i don't know if those stars or the guests at least if they had reasons that they couldn't be there earlier, like if they couldn't make it there Thursday or they couldn't get into Milwaukee th like Thursday or Wednesday or whatever, like if they had reasons they couldn't get there, that's not Anime Milwaukee's fault. If Anime Milwaukee could have tried to get them an early hotel, try to get them to the con just as early as possible before things started, like Thursday, then I think Anime Milwaukee is a little bit more at fault. But I don't know, so I can't criticize them too much for that. But the guest list was still great. Um, they had Vic Lasagna, which is always a great one. But no, it's a great lineup. Uh, Zach Aguilar, I got to do the press interview thing. Here's a video. Um, actually, you'd have to click out probably at the end for that because of the way YouTube does annotations now. Uh, oh, no, the card. There we go. But yeah, um, he was really nice. He was really cool um, to talk to and see. For a, a new voice actor, he, I think, has a lot of confidence about him. Um, and, but not in a cocky way. Um, so I really like, I thought he was a cool person to talk to, or even if it was in a press conference set, uh, setting. I will say I have given, Mil I know in other reviews, I have given Anime Milwaukee a lot of shit for their rave uh, last year. And it was bad. This year was actually pretty good. Um, I liked the, the, the DJs were really good. Um, I, it, was, it was really cool. Um, they had some, some Mimi songs, which is always fun. Um, the music was loud this time, which is nice. Um, I don't like talking too much about the rave because there's, I don't think there's a whole lot to say about it, but, um, it starts pretty early at 10, which is okay. Um, I think it's actually pretty good. Um, last but not least the merch room. So the merch room, I think is the most improved of anime Milwaukee this year. Um, I, I this is definitely not something I was going to talk about a lot last year cause I didn't do a review and I didn't mention it in other reviews. Um, that I did do last year. But the merch room this year is so much better than it ever has been in years past. I will say I did like Anime Midwest last year a lot more. I'll probably like other merch rooms that I do go to this year a lot more ASEN. But that being said, I'm reviewing Anime Milwaukee as Anime Milwaukee, um, which is compared to last year, significantly better. And I at least will compare it to ones that I think are like to it. So I'm not gonna compare Anime Milwaukee's merch room to ASEN. Um, because that's not fair. Uh, it's completely different sized conventions. However, one that I do think is comparable is Anime Midwest. And Anime Midwest, I do think, is better. Why? I just think they had a better kind of layout to things. Um, I will say Anime Milwaukee's layout this year is the best that it has ever been. Um, they finally moved, they, they did put the Artist Alley in the merch room in the same location, which is good. I do like that. I don't mind the way they did the artist alley last year, which is kind of on the outside of the merch room, but the merch room was still kind of cramped. Uh, where this year, there was so much space in the merch room. Like there's crazy space. I was never cramped in there, which is awesome. It is, and I felt that exact way in Anime Midwest too. So um, I think both of them are very close to each other. I think Anime Midwest just had better variety. Um, whereas Anime Milwaukee kind of felt like it had a lot of the same types of merch. No, but for real objectivity, I felt like there was a little bit more variety in cons that are similar to Anime Milwaukee, um, but not Anime Milwaukee just didn't live up to those other ones. Okay, so that goes in the main categories, um, but for miscellaneous issues that I had with the con, um, one of them, it didn't actually happen as much as maybe I thought it was going to, but I do want to make a note of it because I think it's important to, um, which is that um, the way the convention is trying, is continually trying to um, thwart people from doing uh, business transactions at the con that the con doesn't know of. 
a lot of this comes to photographers. So the con had made a release in the past, a while, long time ago, um, where they had mentioned that if you are go wanting to do uh, paid photography at the convention, uh, you must get a photographer's badge, which costs an extra $50 over whatever badge you get. Regular badge, you know, just a day badge, a press badge, you know, like any badge you get, you still have to pay $50. So if you get a press badge, that's so you go, which is a free badge to go to the con, but you have to do work for the con like I'm doing right now, um, then you still have to pay the $50 to get the photographer's badge. At least that's what I've been led to believe. Which to me is in its principle, not a terrible thing. I think, you know, regulating who is doing what is fine, but I've heard other cons pay, make you pay way less or they at least make you file certain things so they just know who you are and what's happening and for how much and whatever. Like, I get the point that Milwaukee doesn't want to be held reliable for the transactions that happen at Anime Milwaukee. The problem is you just need writing. You don't need to force people to pay certain amounts. And you're not going to thwart people from doing it because people are just going to do it in secret. Or they're just not going to do it in the convention center. Like. I don't really do photography at conventions. Um, I want to in the future. Uh, future plug, by the way, for a video that will be coming out in the future. But their release had stated that they're just going, they would ask anybody that had professional looking camera equipment about if they're doing paid photography. And for example, Nick from Confident Video does free photography sessions at conventions. And, you know, he easily could have, he actually was asked about it. And the person didn't clearly have an understanding of what the actual rule was and made it much harder of a situation than it needed to be. Um, now, it only happened to Nick once, which is fine. I didn't really hear about it happening to me or Justin, which is uh, Justin Pineda, which is another great YouTuber. You can see, here's a card. But yeah, um, you know, I didn't really hear too much about that otherwise. Um, still, I think on principle, there are problems with the the reasoning that they wanted. I get the I understand why they wanted this to happen. I think their execution of it needs to be fixed. Um, pay, having photographers pay an extra fifty dollars thwarted well-known photographers from coming to the convention. And Katsukon is always the same weekend as Milwaukee. You have to fight Katsukon. As much as you think that, sure, people in Wisconsin aren't going to make a flight to Maryland for a convention, the thing is you want to get other people outside of Milwaukee to come to your convention. You want people from Chicago. You want people, hell, even from, like, Michigan, Iowa, like, Indiana. Like, you want people to go there. Like, people from Indiana especially, they have access to a lot of conventions. Convention Reviews is a great example of this. He can go to a lot of conventions. He could easily choose, though, between Katsukon and Anime Milwaukee. And, you know, if he's going to be harassed by convention staff about being there, essentially, he's not going to go. And neither did a lot of other photo like photographers. And Milwaukee lo Anime Milwaukee loses out as a result of that. All right, so to wrap up, uh, who is this convention for? Um, honestly, this convention is just for kind of the merch heavy early con goer. What I mean by this is, are you if you're a person that really doesn't like overcrowded conventions or like really crowd or even just big conventions in general, um, if you're somebody that really just likes to go, you know, sp spend their money, get their waifus, you know, look for things like get get cool things that they don't want to just get online because they're not sure if they're they're shady they want to see the things before they buy them hands-on this is the convention for you the merch room is good the game room is good you know like actually the merch room is great i should say that it is great um you know but like it's not one that you really want to go to if you want if you want a big crowd or you want to have like a, a you know big crowd pleasing convention this isn't it like i feel like almost all conventions have staff problems but like i really don't feel like this is a great convention to go to for panels um it's a good convention for panels it's not a great convention for panels it's not one like yumicon where a lot of things are well detailed you know, even Anime Midwest at least detailed the convention or the panels better, though there wasn't a great offering of them. Um, 
if you remember my anime midwest la uh, review from last year this is about a similar um kind of thing i gave for them and it's because they're comparable conventions so personally for me um i kind of have a little bit of a struggle to think that i'm really rearing to go again next year um this kind of was a disappointing year to me uh for anime milwaukee i used to kind of hold it like the first year i went after or after the first year i went i should say i really kind of held the convention in a lot of high regard and this year it in it was a big give and take like every every positive thing had a negative thing um which is disappointing um and in a way i think it's just having going to conventions like yumacon you know and seeing kind of the quality that they bring it's not just the numbers but it's the quality um makes it a little bit um hard for me to like really feel excited to go again next year um i'm hoping this that that i'm hoping that kind of feeling doesn't affect me going to katsunicon later this year but um i do think it has affected me a little bit so that being said uh we're so that being said, did you go to Anime Milwaukee? Did you have a lot of fun there? Uh, if Tell me what you know, what you think about my feelings and interpretations on the convention in the comments below. Otherwise, you can just uh, expect me. The next convention is going to be ASEN. I'm really excited. I got my badge at Anime Milwaukee, so I am set to go. Um, I'm super pumped for it. Um, I'm just super pumped for all the conventions this year. Um, you'll notice the CMV isn't out yet. Um, I'm really trying to work on making it the best I can. Um, I tried something new. It really didn't work out the way I thought it would. Um, so I'm making the best out of it as I can. If you're a cosplayer that I did do this last weekend, just know that I will get you in a video in some shape or form in the near future. I'm really trying to do the best that I can. Um, so I'm really sorry if it's not the quality that I would usually prefer it to be. Um, you know, I, I have editing standards and I try to live up to them. And the uh, struggle I'm having is that I don't feel like the CMV I'm about to make lives up to that standard. And I don't want to release things that go beneath that standard. Um, you know, like I used to, I used to just put them out anyway. Um, now I don't. I, I'm kind of saying no to some things that I just don't think fit the quality that I want them to be. So because of that, I'm struggling to put this the, the CMV out later. So um, I'm going to try to figure out something with it. I have a couple ideas that may save at least the cosplays I did do. I really did do a lot of cosplay, choosingly. Um, but as a result, um, I think I did a, too little um, mistakenly. So as a result, um, my attempt kind of failed in its execution. A lot like Anime Milwaukee. Do look out for that video or some cosplay video to come out in the near future from this video. Um, otherwise, I will see you guys at ASEN or in the next video. Hopefully you're there. Bye.